This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We look now at what some are calling the Palestine exception to free speech and academic freedom on college campuses across the United States. Soon we'll hear from a student and professor at Barnard. But we begin with a new report by longtime investigative journalist James Bamford in a series for The Nation on Israel's spying and covert actions in the United States against pro-Palestinian students, supporters and groups. It's headline, the latest piece, Who is Funding Canary Mission? Inside the doxing operation targeting anti-Zionist students and professors. Last month, Jim Bamford wrote a piece headlined Israel's War on American Student Activists. He's joining us now from Washington, D.C. James Bamford, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, tell us what the Canary Mission is. Well, it's a very massive uh, program that's been going on for years and years. Uh, it's secretly run out of Israel, and the purpose is to uh, blacklist and dox uh, students, professors, and largely anybody that uh, uh, disagrees largely with Israel or is pro-Palestinian. Uh, um, many, many people. Uh, suddenly wake up and they find out uh, people are calling them and saying, your name is on a blacklist, uh, uh, the uh, Canary Mission blacklist. And, and, you know, it's designed to intimidate these people, to get them to stop uh, joining uh, pro-Palestinian groups or to uh, stop being activists and to uh, uh, comply with uh, whatever the, the uh, people behind Canary Mission wants. And that's basically to silence them. And the threat is that if you don't be silent, then, uh, you know, your name's going to go on the blacklist. And if you go look for a job when you get out of, uh, when you graduate, or if you're trying to uh, rise up in the uh, profession, uh, p p professional ranks or a professorship, um, it's going to be blocked because your name's on this list and it's almost impossible to get off the list. So that's just one of the, the many ways that the uh, Israeli government has been uh, pushing the uh, American public basically to steer away from uh, pro-Palestinian activism. But how do you know that the Israeli government runs the Canary Mission and why is it called the Canary Mission? Well, I don't know why it's called Canary Mission. It has something to do with canaries in the in the uh, in the mine or something in the coal like mine. that. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the uh, the organization that runs it is very very secret. Um, the two of the organizations that looked into it was uh, the Jewish Forward magazine. And uh, the Israeli newspaper Haratz, and they determined that uh, it was being run secretly from a, a, a place in Israel, um, a very secret place in Israel, and that there was a, a rabbi behind it. Tracing all these links back is very difficult, but that's where they traced it to this, uh, this, uh, these people in, um, in in Israel that were basically running it. A lot of the funding comes from, uh, and again, this is from Haratz and also from the forward, uh, the, uh, a lot of the funding comes from uh, American, uh, wealthy uh, Jewish Americans and uh, Jewish American foundations, uh, millions of dollars and so forth. Um, so that's where a lot of the funding comes from. The Israeli uh, government gets involved because they use uh, Canary Mission as a tool. So if uh, People are coming over from the United States, uh, either Jewish or Palestinian. They're maybe going to visit families. Um, they look at Canary Mission. They actually have it there, and they look at it, and they'll uh, kick people out of Israel. They'll land at the airport. They'll be questioned, and they'll uh, be questioned because their name is on Canary Mission, and then uh, be uh, deported, uh, held in uh, confinement for a, a you know, a couple of days or whatever, and then deported. That's happened to numerous times to uh, the people. Again, they try keeping secret the fact that they're using Canary Mission, but a number of the uh, professors and students who have been thrown out have seen that their name is on the uh, their, the uh, guards at the airport or the inspectors are checking their names off the uh, uh, 
uh, canary mission list. So, um, so there's a heavy involvement of the Israeli government in there in, in this. It's run by uh, uh, mysterious Israelis and it's funded by pro-Israeli uh, money in the United States. So it, the Israeli uh, Israel has its uh, fingers all over Canary Mission. And, and James uh, Bamford, could you talk about the the reasoning and the context in which they created a? Uh, uh, online profiles Canary Mission did for members of the Harvard Crimson's editorial board, a student newspaper? Sure. The, uh, when the, soon after uh, October 7th, the attack, uh, the student newspaper um, came out. Well, there were about 33 organizations that supported a statement uh, basically saying this all didn't start on, on uh, October 7th. This, this these activities have been going on for a long time. The, the fighting between Israel and, and Palestine, with uh, the Palestinians obviously being on the losing side of uh, the war against them by the Israelis. So they were basically saying that, look, it didn't just start uh, on October 7th. Well, that created a storm of, um, of opposition. And almost immediately, almost all the people involved uh, uh, found themselves on a Canary Mission. Even people tangentially involved that happened to sign this uh, this letter. So um, that's how it works. You know, you you uh, you want to intimidate these people uh, into not being an activist. Uh, then you create this blacklist and doxing uh, that tells where they are and who they are, and and, and basically creates a uh, a uh, uh, dossier of them. On this list, and so Jim, you don't want to get on happen, the list. You don't. Didn't activist. that happen when uh, the Harvard Crimson had an editorial supporting BDS boycott, divestment, and sanctions? Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, you know any. It's not just uh, at Harvard. It's uh, schools all over the United States, and uh, Harvard was one perfect example when they had that student letter come out and it was published in the Harvard Crimson. Uh, a lot of the people who were on that, uh, who signed that letter, uh, ended up on on the uh, blacklist uh, uh, for Canary Mission. So again, it's a it's a tool for intimidation, and it a lot of times it works. And, and who are some of the prominent American donors who are involved in funding this effort? Well, it was very difficult to find that uh, because it's secret who. Uh, uh, donates money to the organization, largely secret. There was a, uh, uh, a mistake some group made on, on a tax form. And what that showed was uh, at least one of the groups uh, was the, the Diller family in, in uh, California. They're one of the wealthiest uh, families in California, billionaires. And they had donated $100,000 uh, to the front organization of, uh, of uh, Canary Mission. It's a thing called uh, 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 Megamot Shalom. It's a, basically a front organization in Israel. And so what they did was they donated $100,000 through uh, uh, the Jewish, Committee, uh, Jewish Community Federation of San Francisco. And then from there, it went to another organization, uh, the Central Fund for Israel, which is set up in New York. Um, because if they send the money directly to Israel, they don't get a tax advantage. So by sending it through this sort of uh, uh, front organization, the Central Fund for Israel, or Central Fund of Israel in New York, uh, then they get a tax advantage, and then the Central Fund of Israel just forwards the money to uh, Megamot Shalon, the, the uh, front, com uh, front organization for Canary Mission, and then it goes to Canary Mission. And again, this is very difficult to uh, 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 figure out because the, there are so many uh, obstacles to trying to find out how the money actually goes from these uh, wealthy individuals and organizations to uh, this uh, uh, group in, in um, Israel. You're saying the and Canary so Mission should have to sign up as a foreign agent? Well, yeah, uh, I'm saying that the uh, the people who are, first of all, this is a clandestine organization. It's very secretive. It's hidden behind a front company and or a front organization in Israel, and it's being used by the Israeli uh, intelligence to find people that they could uh, 
uh, deny entry at the airport and deport and so forth. So this is an organization that's secret. It's being used by the Israeli government uh, to the detriment of American citizens. So if you're contributing to it, uh, you could be considered a, uh, a contributing to a, uh, a foreign en entity, and uh, you could be considered an agent of a foreign government. So uh, those are issues that should be looked into. You know, I've been doing all these stories. I've, I've talked to numerous FBI agents, and the F FBI agents uh, are fully in favor of actually taking cases. The problem is once they try to bring these cases up the uh, up the channels to the uh, uh, Justice Department, nothing ever happens. So well, Jim, we're no going to have to— No matter what it is— We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we're going to be speaking with a Barnard professor, but you do write about a Columbia University Law School professor, Catherine Frankie, who at one time sat on the Academic Advisory Council Steering Committee of Jewish Voice for Peace. Upon her landing in Tel Aviv, you write, an official at the airport showed her what appeared to be her canary mission profile. After being held in detention for 14 hours, she was deported and informed that she would be permanently banned from Israel. And just just one example. Uh, Jim Bamford, we want to thank you for being with us, investigative journalist well known for exposing National Security Agency, the CIA. New York Times has called him the nation's premier journalist on the subject of the NSA. The New Yorker called him the NSA's chief chronicler. We'll link to your series in The Nation, including the last one, Who is Funding Canary Mission? Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org give.